our presentation is on terrorism. So our research question is, what steps are necessary in order to reduce terrorism and its effects? So before we go on, I would like to give a definition of terrorism. Terrorism is the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, uh, in order for uh, political aims. All right, here we have the causes of terrorism. All right, so there are three main causes of terrorism. We have socioeconomic position, political turmoil, and religious beliefs. Socioeconomic position, of course, as you hear in the name economic, um, poor people are more likely to commit acts of uh, extremist acts. Also, you have to notice the socio part of that, uh, of that phrase. So socio, socio means things like social, so like a lack of like rights. So things like freedom of religion are big players in this thing. And also we have political turmoil. Oftentimes, uh, terrorist groups are nationalist groups, like, we, like you see in Ireland during the Troubles in the 60s to 80s, I believe. And religious beliefs, of course, like the uh, infamous group Al-Qaeda, ISIS, that we are so familiar with. However, it's, this, however, religion is not the main cause of terrorism, all right? All right, so, <laughs> all right, so religion is, um, it's a field with a lot of absolutes, so, and justifications, as well as excuses. One of these is the fact is in Islam, as you can see, even though it's not, you know, just native to Islam, of course, is the idea that if you do something for their religion, that you will be excused and sent to paradise. And also, it may, it, like, it reads the absol absolutes of these religions, and this is how, and it, uh, they interpret it as this is how it must be. And it gives them an absolute to, to strive for. All right, rather, um, things like this, pop culture and anti-imperialist tendencies contribute more to terrorism than religion. So pop culture. So um, have you guys ever heard of rap like that? Yeah. So terrorism is a bit like rap, believe it or not. So early rap in the 90s, um, my mother had a story about this, how she learned Ice Cube when she realized one of his songs was literally talking about robbing a store and shooting police that came to try to save the hostages. And she realized that she looked up to this man. And this is kind of how terrorists work, because uh, it's kind of going against the establishment. You see, and the establishment is, of course, anti, as you can see, anti-imperialist tendencies are Western countries like the United States. So when the, these people, they see like these groups attacking Western countries, they may not like, may not condone the acts themselves, but they approve of the fact that their uh, rule is being uh, destabilized. Okay, so this is the impact slash effects of terrorism. Okay, so three major ones are uh, PTSD, structural damage, and the funding to defense. So, um, PTSD, 10,000 people in New York have gotten it since the 9-11 attacks, and this is an issue for a, a number of things. One is, it stops production in that work environment completely. If they see anything that can trigger their PTSD, they're out for the day, maybe even the week, maybe even the month, who knows. But it's, PTSD is a very common thing that can happen very easily. Or it's not common, but it can happen very easily. So, um, for, the, the, for funding to defense, uh, the U.S. alone spends $598.5 billion on its defense, and that could be sent to helping poverty, helping solve poverty, um, giving people homes, fixing cities after natural events like Hurricane Harvey. And uh, for structural damage, including for 9-11, the Twin Towers, including the loss of stock market wealth, uh, $2 trillion was lost, and that's way more than they could have intended. Okay, so this is a quote by Judith Lewis Herman, a psychiatrist. The conflict between the will to deny horrible events and the will to proclaim them aloud is the central dialectic of psychological trauma. It's just it's about PTSD. So now I'm going to go on to why terrorism is important and the huge impact of terrorism. So in a poll, 79% of respondents believe that terrorism was a critical threat to the U.S. compared to any other potential threat. So our fight against terrorism has costed around $1.7 trillion from 2001 to 2015. And roughly $631 billion uh, was the global cost of terrorism from 2001 to 2015. So here's a graph showing the number of fatalities due to terrorism. And as you can see, it's been rising over the couple, past couple of years. And 200,000, 216,914 global deaths due to terrorism, 2006 to 2015. <coughs> so our team solution is the Homeland Security. 
So Homeland Security's benefits is that it's much cheaper, only roughly $691 billion compared to the $1.7 trillion that the war on terror cost. And then another benefit is that it uh, reduces transna transnational terrorism, like border terrorism. And another benefit it provides is the increase in air safety, like such as the VPS, visa, VSP, the visa security programs, and the uh, enhanced explosive screenings. One flaw that uh, Homeland Security has, though, is that it might cause social issues, most notably shown on the Mexico and U.S. border. And one limitation that Homeland Security has is that it only really helps the home country and no nothing else. Okay, so uh, another solution is the war on terror. Um, the benefits are it will shut down Al Qaeda, and uh, the goal is to destroy international terrorism so it can no longer hunt happen in a bunch of different countries. But the flaws are it's, it's, it's expensive, it costs around 1.7 trillion dollars to attempt to attempt to quench out terrorism. Not even actually, there's no 100% success chance to quench out terrorism. This is just an attempt at it, 1.7 trillion dollars. And uh, man, there's many different terrorist groups and they'll just keep popping up. It's hard to stop something that you don't know for sure about. Uh, one of the limitations is that it's extremely costly. As you'll see with most of these solutions, they are extremely costly because terrorism is an international problem, not just one national problem. All right, and this is increased well-being. This deals with the socioeconomic uh, problem of terrorism. So one of the things we can do is we can increase the education level of individuals. This is usually hailed as the best way to stop terrorism, and it is. It does lower the incidence of ter um, the likeliness of a person to uh, take place in a terrorist act. However, um, weirdly enough, it actually increases the population's support for violent acts. So less likely to actually commit acts, but more likely to support such acts of violence. It also decreases the poverty level, which uh, incentivizes people to stay like where they are and to not give their lives for their god. Flaws, however, more education does lead to more violent extremism, and also um, around 175 billion a year in extreme poverty, and that's an extreme amount of money that many countries won't be willing to invest in other countries. And also, religious tolerance. This is one of the easiest ones to think about. All right, religions have to become aware of other religious struggles. They have to become more tolerant, and also we have to become more tolerant of religions. Flaws, however, some people might not listen. Fun extremist groups are usually on the margins of religions, and as such, they don't listen to any centralized authority and may just well heed their own way of doing things. However, um, one of the limitations of this is that it's going to take a lot of time. The, the American perception of terrorism is that it's caused by religion, specifically one religion, Islam. And in order for terrorism to be eliminated, we have to stop thinking about terrorism as a mainly something that's Islamic and mainly something caused by religion. Citations. So I'm going to be asking you guys some questions. Um, what was the strongest counter argument to the solution you guys um, identified and why? Okay, so the strongest counter argument would be um, like how do you stop like how to stop terrorism? That's a really strong counter argument because like the arguments are stopping terrorism, of course, but how to stop terrorism? Because terrorism can be anywhere, it can be everywhere. It's just hard to stop. Okay. Um, in what way did you improve your ability to work with groups as a result of this project, Hans? So we had to communicate more, and that was a main factor for the success of our group. Okay. All right. What was the uh, what? Let me see how I can. What is a way in which your team resolution makes you think differently about your own individual research, Brendan? Makes me realize that some people truly just uh, some countries. Sometimes the best option may just be to defend themselves rather than trying to stop the problem at the source, because the homeland security means uh, while ignoring other countries' plights, you protect your own people. All right. Well, thank you.